So hi, uh, my name is uh, Johan Hovold and I work as a consultant uh, primarily with uh, embedded Linux systems. I uh, maintain the kernel's USB serial subsystem and that's partly why I take an interest to in this topic of today. Uh, I also maintain Graybus together with uh, Greg Crow Hartman, uh, which is the Unipro application layer stack that came out of Project Dara, uh, Google's attempt to build a modular phone. Uh, today, so I'll talk about the serial device bus, which, uh, to put it simply, is about trying to make uh, your detached, serial attached devices fit better into the Linux uh, driver or device model. Let's see here. So UART's been around for a fairly long time now. Since uh, the 1960s, we'd had both UART and the, the electrical standard for our S232 signaling standard. And despite the advent of newer technologies, USB, PCA, and so on, uh, it doesn't seem they're going anywhere anywhere time soon. Uh, there's still a common interface for, uh, especially in embedded systems, for uh, Bluetooth, NFC, radio, and GPS devices. So uh, the kernel uh, TTY layer provides an abstraction for the serial connection itself. And you've all seen the familiar character devices, TTY S1, for example which you can use to, to read and write and access the underlying hardware. Uh, but it fails to provide a good means of modeling other uh, resources associated with the device. The device is not simply a serial connection. It's also, it could be GPIOs for reset, uh, wake-up signaling, uh, regulators clocks, uh, it could be an audio interface and so on. And the kernels, uh, and you may also want to interact with other subsystems in the kernel and that brings you to uh, the so-called line discipline drivers within quotes uh, because uh, they're not really drivers in the Linux uh, terminology but it's the best we've got and they have their own downsides which uh, the primary one being that they require user space to actually set up the line discipline configure the port um, and before you can access the, the, uh, the class devices so uh, in this talk, I'll talk, go over, uh, I won't go into all the details of the ready uh, TTY layer, but enough to, to cover this, uh, this presentation. Uh, I'll discuss in some more depth the, the problems with these line discipline drivers, then go through uh, the SERDEV, how it's been implemented, how it hooks into the TTY layer, uh, the interface that it provides for driver developers so that they can build their own, uh, move over to this, this new interface, the new bus. Uh, I'll talk some about the limitations and, and possibilities for future work as well. So, uh, t the TTY layer does a lot of things. It has to do with pseudo terminals and all these things. I won't go into that part of it. For now, it's enough to think about it as a, a means of accessing the underlying um, serial device. And typically, this is by exposing a character device to user space. Uh, which then uh, goes down through the stack. It's the character device, uh, which uh, builds on top of the line discipline, which has to do with uh, things like IO processing, uh, emitting signals, uh, depending on what input comes in, uh, implementing uh, the basic line editing uh, facilities of the canonical input mode, uh, and echoes, parity errors, and so on. Uh, the line discipline itself uh, is built, or has a layer between the, the uh, the line discipline and the TTY driver, which is the TTY port, is where the buffering is currently implemented in the TTY layer. And it also provides a kind of abstraction layer for implementing common semantics around how, what you do in opening ports, raising the DTR, RTS signals, and so on. Uh, and you can see within exa parentheses there, if it's not too small, um, that examples of the common ones. So the TTY driver uh, could be anything. It could be serial core, it could be USB serial, it could be USB ACM, it could be Firewire, Graybus, and so on. And it, typically you have a lower level device driver underneath which knows how to speak the, to the actual device hardware. Um, so you could implement some kind of basic driver in user space. I've used GPSD here as an example of application. It's not really a driver, but as soon as you start thinking about having other resources to manage this, a GPIO for enabling power and so on, it sort of turns into a user space driver implementation, which you can build, can build on top of the character device. And 
the problem here is that you have a description of your system which lives in user space. It lives in, in uh, uh, instead of having it describe your firmware, which we typically do with device tree and ACPI. Uh, for example, you need to know which port to open, which port is the Bluetooth uh, device connected to before you can access the Bluetooth device. Um, and even if you can, with through the, the, the Sisyphus interface, for example, or the newer uh, user space interface that GPIO libs provide, access GPIOs and interrupts from user space, it, you, the kernel doesn't provide any means of accessing the clock framework or regulator framework, for example. And obviously, these are important uh, uh, resources that you need to be in control of in order to implement proper power management. And having power management implemented in user space also has its drawbacks because you need to signal when the system is going into system suspend and so on. Firmware loading is another issue, um, which um, you, simply because you cannot rely on all the, the infrastructure that's already available in the kernel for loading and managing firmware. Uh, but as I mentioned in the introduction there, uh, user space drivers aren't enough. You may need to interact with other uh, subsystems in the kernel. Uh, uh, Bluetooth being one example, uh, the input uh, drivers that um, are built on top of this CRIO, NFC, uh, and so on are example of, of line discipline drivers. So you attach, you, you replace the normal uh, line discipline with the dedicated line discipline that's implemented as part of that subsystem and typically those line disciplines would register further class devices which you then use to actually access the hardware. So you abstract um, some of the, the, the transport. Um, so for Bluetooth, uh, the line discipline would register an HEI zero device, for example. And this, so, and we have a number of user space daemons uh, written in order to, uh, to manage to set up these line disciplines and they typically need to be running as long as you want to access the underlying hardware. HEI attach is the, the tool you would use in order to set up an, uh, a Bluetooth connection. Um, but so the, the line discipline drivers gives you access to the kernel's firmware in infrastructure, but that may not be enough. You may need to access uh, GPIO still in order to toggle that reset line. And um, there are further issues with how to manage these resources. I go into more detail here. Uh, this is just a quick example of uh, what it may look like when you set up uh, one of these line disciplines. It's an eye control to change the line discipline. And then for, in this case, Bluetooth, you have a dedicated eye control for changing the protocol. And it's only when the protocol is changed that the HEI device magically pops up in the system and you can access it. So it means that you have a, an application talking to the character device, uh, which can then change the line discipline, which in turn registers the class device, and only then application two here can start accessing um, the, um, the subsystem that's being exposed. And if we're having a concrete example, the application one here could be HEI attach, goes down, sets up the line discipline, you get your Bluetooth device, which finally then HEI config can use to configure the Bluetooth device. Uh, of course, it's possible to implement application one and two in one process if you want, uh, or at least in one, yeah. Um, but this is typically how it's used. And once the, uh, the class device has been registered, you typically don't use the character device anymore. All the uh, data flow goes through the line discipline and, and down to the underlying hardware. So, uh, to, so what's the problem with that, um, that image? Um, Partly it has to do with the description. As I mentioned earlier, we typically want to describe our systems in, in firmware, uh, describe what is connected where and how is it connected. In the current, with the old way of doing things, with the line disciplines, you have part of the description for the, for the, for the underlying hardware, for the, for the serial ports in firmware, but you need user space to tell you which line di discipline to attach to which port, which B to run, and so on. Uh, we also, of course, then get these user space demons that we need to just keep around. Um, the description of these associated resources I mentioned, GPI has been controlled, so on, uh, there's no really good way of describing them either. Uh, the, since um, 
you don't have a description of the, the Bluetooth entity, the, the, the client that's sitting off the, the serial port in your firmware. Uh, and obviously you need to access such resources in order to implement power management properly. Uh, there may also be an issue with the fact that the line discipline is keeping the port open. So depending on how the underlying serial driver, the TTY driver has been implemented, that may prevent the, uh, that hardware from going into uh, runtime suspend. And finally, firmware loading. Uh, also, you may need to toggle some reset lines. So in comes the serial device bus, which uh, was written by uh, Rob Herring from Lenar. And it's a bus uh, construction to, to deal with specifically these kind of like your detached serial devices. So the immediate aim, I think, was to get rid of the TIS shared transport driver, which some of you have been used, which needed to be uh, used in order to be able to access some of the TI uh, Y-Link Bluetooth devices. And they had their own user space daemon, and uh, yeah, Rob wanted to get rid of that for one of their systems. Uh, there has been some earlier efforts in this area. It keeps popping up over the, the last few years. Um, and it's been driven by power management concerns. For example, just a simple be able to power on that GPS device when the port is open and close it again afterwards and they don't want to use the normal modem control signals for it. And there's also been a, a, a specific driver for, a, a, I think, the N900, uh, the Nokia Bluetooth device, uh, which needed some of these additional resources. And it's been going back and forth and finally there was some consensus on how to do this. And uh, to put it simply, it was to, to build it on top of the TTY port abstraction and uh, to implement it as this bus. And I think Greg was involved in, in and Alan Cox also in, in pointing uh, the discussion in the right direction here. So this new bus was merged in 4.11, uh, but it turned out there were some lifetime issues. So I reverted the patch that hooked into the TTY layer, layer because you could end up with all sorts of crashes when you were deregistering your uh, drivers. And I also only enable it again for serial core in 4.12 because of issues that I will get back to later in this talk. So uh, the SeerDev um, introduces a new bus type and there's a bit of um, inconsistency in the naming here. So the bus is named uh, serial within the kernel. So you have SysBus serial, but it's referred to as SERDEV in the uh, driver uh, source code structure, for example. Uh, it introduces two concepts, uh, the SERDEV controller and the SERDEV client. And to make things worse, the SERDEV clients are also known as slaves and sometimes as SERDEV devices. So beware that I'll maybe going back and forth between some of these three, uh, three terms here. Uh, while the serial controller is, is, is an abstraction that so you could theoretically have different kinds of serial controller implementations, there is only one controller implemented in the kernel today, and that's the one that's built on top of the TTY port. Um, and this means that when a TTY driver registers its port with the TTY layer, um, uh, the uh, Serdev core will go out and check, do I have a firmware description? Is there anything attach, attached to this particular port? And if it, if it does, it will register the slave and it will register the controllers uh, and not register the character device. So, and the, the clients are described in firmware and I will uh, show you how, how that looks. Um, so with Serdev, you end up with a stack like this instead. If we take the, the Bluetooth example that I used before, we have the TTY driver uh, intact, no changes there. We have the TTY layer, which now bypasses. The, the line disciplines are actually still there, but they're sort of bypassed. And the controller hooks on directly onto the port. Uh, there's a bus layer, which, to which, so that different drivers can bind to, to the controller. And in this case, it's a HEI um, serial driver, which binds to the controller. And that one, in turn, when it's probing, would register the HAI device and provide the, the class device that ultimately HAI config would be using. So just to compare it to the old situation here, we've now gotten rid of the, the daemon which keeps the line discipline open. And we, yeah, the, the, the layering is just simply nicer. <laughs> There it is. 
Binding is done by device IDs, usually in the driver model. Where do you get the device IDs from for these serial controller things? So there are also, um, we use compatible strings in device tree. So if you don't have a device tree, how would we do the bindings? That's not possible yet. Okay. I'll get back to that. Hang on. Who wants this? I'll mention that too. <laughs> so, so currently, it's, it's device tree only. Okay. But there are provisions for uh, extending it, and there are some patches floating around to actually just start uh, enabling for, for HCPI as well. And I'll get back to it. Okay. Um, so uh, a little word on how uh, Serdiv is sort of hooks into the TTY layer. So by extending the TTY port extractions with uh, a structure for the upgoing callbacks for receiving data or for telling the, the line discipline typically that there is more room for writing more data out. Uh, and there are only two TTY port clients really. It's the default one which just passes the data up to the line discipline and uh, when you have a serial controller, uh, these, these, opera this, these operations are replaced with this TTY port serial uh, clients operations. And as I mentioned, the controller and slaves are, are, are I already mentioned that, they're registered when the TTY port is registered. So the device tree bindings then uh, would look like this. You have a um, in, in device tree, the, the slaves or the, the, the clients are simply child nodes of the UART device. So, and, and the only requirement really is that they have a compatible property, and that's what you use then to uh, bind drivers, match, do the driver matching. Um, there's a generic property, a description of the generic uh, slave device properties, uh, which mentions a optional max speed property, and it's not supposed to be used for setting the actual baud rate used when communicating with the device, but more to, to lower, because that's assumed to be something that the driver should know. The driver should know how to, what its devices uh, support. But the max speed can be then be used instead to cap the maximum speed if there are other issues with the physical board, which means that the driver cannot use the full speed that the device is capable of. And this is also then where you would finally be able to describe those additional resources, the GPIOs, the clocks, uh, the, uh, the regular the spin controls, and so on. A um, little example from SysFS, what this would look like. In the first, the first serial uh, device up there, a platform device, uh, would not have a child node in its device tree. So, so this is binding to UART1. UART0 would get its TTY class device registered while the second one instead would have a um, serial controller which is named serial zero, they just numbered from there, and a client shows up at serial zero dot and then an index, but since serial is currently only a single slave, you would only, all clients would be named serial uh, number dash zero. And as you can see here, the, the driver for the client would then be a serial driver, H-E-I-T-I, which belongs in the serial subsystem, and it's the client in turn which would have registered the HGI device. Um, so, driver interface. Uh, it, it, since we're replacing the line discipline, it's kind of uh, natural to have the, the operations and callbacks closely resemble that of the line discipline operations. So you have uh, functions for opening and closing a serial port, changing terminal settings, writing to the port, um, managing and reading the modem control signals, uh, and then two callbacks for uh, incoming data and for uh, the write wake up when there's more room in, in the buffers of the lower level drivers. There are a few additional helpers, uh, basically wrappers around these functions, convenience helpers. Um, this is actually the full set of uh, functions that you have. Open, yeah, you can read for yourself. It's wait until sent that it didn't mention, um, flushing the right buffers, seeing if there's the right room. Uh, but the thing to note here is that uh, there is no right serialization enforced by uh, Serdev as in, in contrast to what the TTY layer does. It will make sure, so you need to take care in your driver not to like sort of call into the, the underlying drivers at the same time uh, yourselves. 
And there's also no further operation ordering enforced anywhere. So um, the underlying drivers would typically um, assume that you would first open the port before changing the port settings. But you can uh, shoot yourself in the foot and do that the other way around here if you're not careful. Um, and the callbacks are defined in a, a structure like this one. So again, they basically just map onto the, the, the line discipline. Uh, sorry. So you have the TTY port clients coming up and they just forward it to the slave device driver um, through the structure uh, function pointers. Just a uh, short example of concrete of template codec you can fill out later if you want to. It's a uh, serial device driver struct. You need to fill in uh, how to match. So this would now, since we're only, it's device tree only, it would be a, a pointer to uh, an OF match table. Um, you set your name for the, for the driver and a probe and remove function. That's all you need to provide. And then it's a convenience macro for uh, declaring a module as a uh, serif device driver. The probe function itself would then typically set the client operations, which are the callbacks. So you you get called when when the driver is matched. You get your probe function called. You would do the normal initialization that you do, set up your private data and so on, store a pointer to the serif device, and also store the private data in the serif. Uh, device the other way around for remove. Uh, and then you set up your client operations and before opening the port. Because once the port is open, you could get incoming data and need, the serif needs to know where that data is supposed to go. The driver is responsible for, for setting up baud rates, as I mentioned before. And once that all done, you would typically register some kind of other interface uh, if you're exposing a class device to use space. And in those, in that class device, interface callbacks is where you would later be using this um, pointer to your serial device in order to, to write data and process it in the callbacks. Um, so in the current kernel, we have uh, four drivers uh, as examples for serial clients. It's three UART dri uh, Bluetooth drivers and one Ethernet driver. So you can actually do Ethernet over UART here. Um, the first driver that was merged was the HEI-LL, HEI-TI, it's actually named internally. And it was implemented with a sort of like a, a library functionality which is directly based on uh, the old HEI line discipline. So we have some kind of code duplication here, which may become an issue. Um, H, the old uh, HI BCM line discipline and Broadcom uh, Bluetooth devices uh, just gained uh, some rudimentary serial support as well in 4.14. And I want to say something more about the HI BCM driver because it, in a way it's this kind of precursor to serial. Uh, so it's, this has been a problem for people for, for a long time and people have been working around it in several ways and this is one way that it's been done. So when... Um, when using these devices, you would typically have a uh, register a platform companion device based on a description in ACPI or platform code, which actually defines a uh, child device of the, the, the UART in question. And, it's, and there you can then uh, define your GPIOs and your clocks. And this one is then registered to a driver uh, global list when, when the platform device is probed and then Sometime later, HI callbacks comes in, and you go to this global um, list, and you start matching against, do they have the same parent device? So it's, it's, it's a hack. It's been working, uh, but it's there, and it really maps one-to-one, -one basically, to what Serdiv is doing. But, and with the Serdiv ACPI device uh, support coming in, uh, we should be able to get rid of it. But there's a regression risk here because now you have all these systems out there which expects that when they set the line discipline, they will be able to look up that platform device and now Serda would, would claim that instead and it would actually break. So I realized that we're looking at the, the, the proposals that were posted, so I need to get in and start reviewing those, um, post my comments online. So, um, summary. Um, some of the limitations with Serial, I've mentioned a few of these already. It's serial core only. 
And the main reason for that, there were twofold reasons. There were the lifetime issues in the beginning, and it means that uh, we identified that several um, TTY drivers do things weirdly, like the lifetimes of their ports don't match what Cerdo was expecting, even with the fixes that went in. So before they have been cleaned up, you, know, you cannot enable uh, Cerdo for them. But it's enabled for serial core, which is, I guess, the main um, uh, most important um, TTY driver subsystem. Uh, but the other main issue for, or reason for not enabling it for further subsystem is that it has no hot plug support whatsoever. It was basically simply ignored uh, when, when implemented. And so we don't want to have um, this enabled for um, USB serial, for example, because when you pull the plug, you would crash the computer or the system. Um, it's device tree only for now, uh, but um, things that seems like something that will probably change quite soon. Uh, it's also single slave now initially, but that's also something that's being worked on. And as I think I mentioned, it's sort of like this raw mode only where the error flags from the underlying drivers, when you have parity errors and so on, they're simply discarded. So Sirdiv doesn't support it as of now. So uh, hot plug. Um, it's implemented in, in the TTY layer using file operations and, and hang up callbacks. And the problem is that Serif doesn't use the file abstraction at all because it lies underneath the character device. So in order to be able to implement this, this would require further changes to the TTY layer. Uh, you would need to add some kind of uh, barriers, flushing out data before um, shutting down the ports. Uh, and this is, as I said, partial reason for the initial revert. But we do still have PCI hot plug for some of the, the, the drivers in, in serial core, so technically you could still trigger this, even though it's unlikely that you will rip out your PCI cards, I guess. Mm. Um, and there's further issues here. So we don't have a good way in the kernel for describing what's sitting on top of dynamic buses. Uh, USB only recently gained rudimentary support for a device tree. You can describe, for example, if you have a, an embedded system where you have an Ethernet port, that Ethernet device is connected over USB, it's always bound to the same port. You can describe it in device tree and you can, get, you can use that to access resources. But when you start talking about hot plugging, you don't know where it's gonna show up in the system, which port it's gonna be connected to. And we need some way of probably utilizing device tree overlays uh, to, to bridge that gap. But even if we have device tree overlay support in the kernel, we don't have an in-kernel user space interface for actually loading those overlay FS, uh, overlays into the kernel. So there are a lot of small pieces here that needs to be uh, addressed, uh, infrastructure that needs to be in place before we can enable um, SereDev for devices like USB serial or CDC, ACM, FireWire, Graybus, and so on. And Hans uh, brought to my attention that he has a device where this is a, a, a cute problem of his. It's one of the CEC devices, who will be talking about CEC later today, uh, which attaches uh, over USB and presents itself as an ECM device. And this has been implemented and been forced to be implemented as a line discipline driver uh, using the input serial line discipline, which then uh, enables this to speak this, this Pulse 8 protocol. And this is something that could have been done. And it obviously then requires you to run the input attach um, daemon. There are issues with hot plug uh, as of now, if I understand it correctly. And um, it would be nice if, and ultimately when the, the line discipline driver has been enabled, it shows up as a dev CEC device. And that's all the user cares about. So what you would like to have is plug it in, have a UDEV rule uh, that loads an overlay uh, into the kernel and bam, there's my um, CC device immediately. Um, there's some quirks, I don't want to call them limitations really, but um, we're still allocating a line discipline even though it's not used. It's not supposed to be used, but it is actually used. Um, TTY is, is difficult and hard and it, no one really knows everything that's going on everywhere. But it turns out, for example, when you're setting um, the, your port settings, um, uh, terminal settings, you're actually, we're still calling into the line discipline even though it's not supposed to be used. So more um, review is really needed there. Uh, 
the controller is also always registered. Uh, as soon as a serial core uh, driver probes, it will first register a controller, set everything up, then look at the device tree and see, hey, I don't got any notes, and then like unwind everything and deregister and uh, register the character device instead. That seems a bit inefficient. Um, obviously, there is no character device exposed when you have a serial dev uh, controller um, registered. Some people find that a bit. Uh, they would like to have both in a weird way, but I think this is more to be called a feature than a quirk. Um, there is no bus power management implemented currently. And that, yeah, you think about how to do it. You can still implement power management, of course, using the serial device driver, uh, but um, with how to treat the controllers in, in respect to the child is something that. Um, you would typically, I guess, set just simply ignore children and have the underlying driver um, be able to suspend when there is no data coming. But you may have to implement it as something that's, you, you power on the device when the port is open and then when it's closed. Yeah, um, there are some, some issues to look at that. Um, the operation ordering I mentioned, um, the code application and the potential for regressions here when we're moving line discipline drivers over to the new subsystem. Um, if you try to define a second slave today, uh, you will get all sorts of warnings when you try to register a second client with the same name and, and yeah, Sisyphus code will complain. And you, I mentioned briefly the inconsistent naming that can be a bit confusing when you start looking into the subsystem. So in the works, ACPI support, I already mentioned it. It was posted on September 7th, um, and it moves one of the Broadcom drivers over to this new subsystem. And I think that will constitute a regression. You would break those other systems that rely on this hacky platform device if we merge this. So I will need to bring that up with them. Um, much support is coming in, so we would be able to have more than one slave. Uh, and it's built on top of the new um, Mux subsystem, which seems to have some issues of its own, uh, but it may work eventually. Um, it adds, so this would add a reg property to the, to the bindings and you reduce the, the MUX index as the address for the device on the Serdev bus. Um, this code, I realized as well this week when I was looking into it more closely, has some serious issues. There's um, no locking whatsoever on when you're switching around these callbacks to receive callbacks for uh, which, which driver should the device should the incoming data go to. There's no locking. Uh, yeah, just let's, let's hope it doesn't blow up. And uh, there's no flushing either going on. So when you're switching from one slave to the other, you typically want to clear your input buffers first. And this area also adds a new uh, I2C controller that's attached over UART and some basic parity support, but still no error handling. It just enables the underlying drivers to, to add the parity bits and uh, parity checking. Um, Rave slave driver for some infotainment system that's connected over uh, UART has been posted. And back in May, I think it was, there was a GPS uh, Wi-Fi Bluetooth driver RFC posted. I haven't heard anything about that since. So a uh, bit of a summary of future work would be to address some of those quirks and limitations I just spoke about. Uh, specifically making sure that we get ACPI support. Uh, hot plug is a big issue, I guess, if people want to use devices such as the ones that Hans has and which he says are fairly common. Um, and once that's done, we can enable it for more serial drivers, TTY drivers. Uh, it may be possible to implement some kind of RS485 support on top of this muxing. Uh, you don't have a physical um, mux that you're using, but you can still use it as a kind of arbitrary between and making sure that the, the, the callbacks go to the right device uh, for incoming data. Uh, bus PM, I mentioned as well, needs to be looked into. And of course, there's a number of uh, legacy line di discipline drivers which can now be converted. NFC can, um, the TIST driver would be nice to get rid of, and hopefully a one day Hans's Pulse 8 drivers and some of the other serial drivers might be candidates. Um, just a few pointers. The code is not that much code really. 
Uh, it's basically those three files and a tiny bit of glue in the TTY layer. Um, the device tree bindings are documented as they should. Be aware that they express some, some properties which aren't really implemented yet, actually. Um, and there's also a, a write-up by Neil Brown uh, that was published on LWN while this work was being done, which um, sort of sums up some of the history leading up to CERDEV. Yeah, and that was it. Thanks. Any questions? <clears throat> Mike, what do you want? Um, yeah, I'd like to come back to the hot plug uh, use case. Hmm? Uh, I actually tried this uh, Pulse ATC driver, and I was quite surprised that the kernel has all the information it needs to set it up, it knows the USB vendor ID and such, and there, there was still the need to, to use the user space uh, tool to configure the, the TTY. And um, you said you might want to solve this with device tree overlays, is, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay. But uh, why, why would you need um, uh, the hot plug daemon or UDEV to send you the da the, uh, any data since you already have all the information you need in the kernel? Why would you need any user space help? That's what, what I wonder. Um, that's a good question. For, um, for okay, so, so you're right. It, you wouldn't need it. As long as these devices identify themselves properly and we can, we can say that this is really. But the problem here is that, as I understand it, it's, it identifies itself as a normal ACM device. Yeah, so you could match on the vendor and, and product ID. You're right. But if you're attaching things to, to generic devices like FTD, FTDI chips and so on, you, you may need the overlays. But th that's right. That's a good idea. I should, I should add that there. But if you use your own FTDI chip, you should set it as a vendor and yeah. product ID. So, yeah. Not everyone does. <laughs> Uh, once the hot plug issue is, uh, is resolved, uh, do you think you could be able to do CSFS uh, attach, detach from drivers? Um, yeah, I mean, you can, yeah, 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 absolutely. But that can be done today, or? Yeah, I mean, you can just, you can just unbind the driver, yeah. No, I mean, uh, from user land, you go through CSFS, you select, uh, you find your serial port, and then you attach, you say that there's a, a Bluetooth thing or a GPS. You, can you do that manually today with Sardet? I mean, you, no, no, no. So, so, the, so the drivers would be, would be bound automatically based on um, the device tree matching them currently. Yeah. But once you have a driver bound, I mean, you have the normal attributes for unbinding drivers and rebinding them. But, but the discovery would be automatic. You wouldn't be, you, you mean you want to pass in uh, overlays? Not the overlays. I want to do the same way as uh, ISQLC, <coughs> where I can select which device should use which driver. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So some kind of, hmm. But that's a legacy interface as well, right? Which you typically would only use during development. You want to have your descriptions uh, complete in device tree and not have to do manual things in user space to, to get your ISQLC devices recognized. Yeah, but for board bring up, it's really useful. Yeah, 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 sure. But, but you also have access to the device tree. So in that case, it should be easy to just uh, edit the device tree sources. Okay. I don't know if I have plans anyway of, of adding anything like that. One in the back. Okay. Just one question. Yeah. yeah. Why do you have to go to, through the TTY uh, layer? Could you the not? changes to for hot plug? Oh, what do you mean? Why do you have to go through the TTY layer? Could you not address directly the serial core? Uh, but then you wouldn't be able to use, because we have this TTY port abstraction. Uh, so we have a, a common layer which would be used by all different types of TTY drivers. For example, USB serial, uh, CDC, ACM, uh, Firewire, Graybus, and all. We get all that support for free. But the initial attempts of, of doing this, they try to hook into serial core directly. And um, 
yeah, but that was that was knacked by Alan Cox, and we moved over to the to two whiteboards. Um, so, what would be the exact steps of uh, to to migrate HCI-BCM to something actually useful with the base tree? Because the situation is pretty weird right now. Uh, we have bindings with properties that are completely ignored by the drivers, which is probably the worst situation. Mm. Um, so, yeah, what, basically, what can we do about it? Uh, sorry, say again. So, you, you have for, for the BCM particularly, or? Yeah, for HCI BCM, yeah. So, the it, device tree is like listing, the device tree binding is listing that basically it can take clocks, reset, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, I was, CIOs I was, and so on, but it completely ignores them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's something I, I found as well when, when preparing this and, and going through those drivers a bit more uh, closely. And um, I, I have no idea how those bindings, those bindings got in. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, um, so we have documentation for properties that have never been implemented simply. Uh, and it's, it's simply confusing. Uh, we should probably yeah, go, to, go get that out of the documentation. Oh, uh, HABCM ignores currently some of the parameters of uh, the device tree because the, the development was made on a Raspberry Pi that do not use it. We do not have access to uh, thumb lines from the Raspberry Pi. So we are waiting for other uh, devices like uh, for the SAPI, so we will use them. Okay. <clears throat> No more questions? All right, thank you.